Hello, my friends! We are here for the final part of this little series where we sculpt, retopologize, bake, and texture an archway for this spooky scene. In this video, we're gonna be going over texturing. We're gonna be preparing some nice layers, so let's go. But before we go, of course, if you've liked the series so far, let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel because it really helps us grow and it helps us bring you more 3D knowledge. Let's go. So let's take a look at this and, well, let's start texturing. I'm gonna make this very, very small here. I'm gonna have this as a little sort of like reminder of what we wanna where we're going for. And I am gonna try to use all of the materials that we have here by default. But if by any chance you don't see what material here, just try to look it up online. Usually in Substance Share, like the community-based like a uh, place, there's gonna be some information there. So for instance, I got this concrete cores, and there's also this concrete cast, which looks very, very, very nice. There's this clay earthenware, even this one right here. I really like this clay terracotta. I think this is a good sort of like starting point. So I'm just gonna drop this here on the layers. Now, of course, this color by default is not exactly the color that I'm looking for. So what I can do is I can just start grabbing the colors directly from the elements. I'm gonna go for this neutral gray. It's now a rule of thumb that I follow when I'm texturing things is I always like to start with a little bit of a darker color before we jump onto the onto the lighter colors because when you jump into the lighter colors it's very difficult to bring them back okay so so it's a good idea to start with something like this now how am I gonna know if this is like a like a dark color or not well you can see that the background right now is a flat uh, sort of like neutral gray color right very bright and compared to that our archway is looking a little bit darker so that like follows or, or fits a little bit more with what we're doing. As for the roughness, very important, make sure to go to your shader settings and change the specular quality to at least high so that we can really see the amount of like specularity that we're getting. And I can see that this is being a little bit too glossy, I think. So I'm gonna increase the roughness a little bit more. Now, what do I see? Well, I always like to work first on color variations and the construction of the general texture before I jump into the details such as dirt and the scratches and things like that. So I'm gonna add just another terracotta layer here. And this one, I'm gonna use a black mask, right Right click, add a color selection, and with pick color, I can pick, for instance, the blue elements. And as you can see, that will fill all of the stones with the same color. Now on this clay terracotta, I actually just want color, so I'm gonna press Alt and click on the on the color itself so that it only applies color information. So the roughness is being inherited from the previous layer as well as the bumpiness and all that stuff. And what I can do here is, of course, blend them. We can use overlay, which is going to combine the colors. In this case, I think that one looks quite, quite nice. And I always like to play with, of course, a little bit of this, um, like a blending effect right there. So as you can see, we're, we're really close to the to the stone color, but it just gives a little bit of an extra change or a different like take on the um, on the colors or on the on the hues, so that we get something that looks a little bit more interesting. Let's do another clay terracotta on top of this one. There we go, right there. This one, I'm definitely going to change the colors and I'm going to go a little bit crazy. So this is where you can use a little bit of color theory, right? If the first stone was red, then the next stone can be a little bit of a green or maybe like a bluish color. That aqua there looks very, very nice so that it generates a little bit of a complement with the other one because those two colors, red and green, are complementary colors, right? So we're going to grab the, the mask, right click. We're going to add another color selection and we're going to pick in this case the yellow one. So as you can see, it really jumps to us right now, but as soon as we do like a multiply or like an overlay, it's gonna be toned down quite a bit. And just having a little bit of change there, it's, it's definitely gonna help. Again, Alt and click so that it only affects the color. So we're only changing the hue and look at that we get a very very nice or like variation in color one way you can evaluate your colors while, while inside of substance is to press letter c to go into the channels and look at that i know it's not too much of a difference but hopefully you can all tell that there's a little bit of a change there on the stone so that's it we got the first sort of like a uh, generation of layers the first like part which is the basic construction of our elements the next one is of course the typical ones that we all know we're gonna add a rust layer I love using the rust layer to add a little bit of dirt everywhere. We're going to add a rust layer, add a black mask, right click, add a generator, and we're going to add the dirt ledger. This is going to, of course, make everything look very, very intense, very, very grungy. And this one I like to set to overlay sometimes. Definitely lower the intensity. Like We do want to have a little bit of that effect, but not too much. I'm going to increase the contrast and I'm going to lower the, the dirt a little bit. That's it. So it's a little bit of a, of a punch there on the crevices of the element thanks to this rust. And layer by layer, we're going to be adding this sort of like complexity to it. Now, you can notice that we have a little bit of an issue here with some of the stones. This one right here. In the clay terracotta, the original one, due to how the UVs are separated, we're getting these weird lines. And this is because of the height information, right, is going across styles and it's not matching perfectly. We need to fix that. And to fix that, we can change the projection to a triplanar projection. 
By doing that, we pretty much get rid of that like bump effect, and this is gonna look way, way nicer without any like noticeable seams. Now, the next layer that we're gonna be adding is another very common one, which is the metal edge word that we like to add. And for that one, I am gonna use the concrete, um, like a clean or something that we have right here. Not necessarily because we need the grunginess of that effect. I do like a little bit of it, to be honest. So maybe I'll tile this like 10 times. Yeah, so we get a little bit of a rougher effect. And then what I can do is I can go to the height information and lower the height information to like half of it. So that's not as intense. And we add a black mask, right click, add a generator, and we're gonna add the famous metal ledgeware generator. This is gonna hit all of the borders of the stone. It's gonna look very, very nice. This one I always like to set to, on the, on the base color, I always like to set it to linear dodge so that it adds on top of the colors. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna lower this quite a bit because it, it should be able to be seen from far away or whatever, but it shouldn't be too obvious. And this is where we can start incorporating something that's a little bit more complex, like the mixing between masks, right? So I like to always add a fill layer and on this fill layer, use something like a clouds mask. So in this clouds mask, I can press Alt and click to see what the mask is doing. And you can see right now the clouds is pretty much overlapping or overriding whatever we have on the metal edgeware. This is what the metal edgeware was doing originally, and this is what the clouds is doing. Well, we can multiply. We can multiply the clouds against the other one, and you can see we're going to get a blend between them. Now, if you go to the clouds and change, for instance, the balance right, decrease the balance or increase the contrast, we're going to be able to get metal edgeware on only certain aspects or certain parts of the element. And the cool thing here is you can always go to the seed and randomize the seed to get a slightly different effect on how this mask is like interacting. If I take a look at M now, if I press M to go into the into the main color, you're going to see how, how much nicer this looks. Instead of having, again, a very obvious and very like a dirty sort of like effect right here, we're getting something that looks way, way, way more interesting and allows us to have a more sort of like a nicer representation representation of the element and I want to like clean them up no not too much you can see on the reference we don't get too much edgeware so it should be something very very subtle something like that at any point you can go here and for instance add a paint layer and paint out certain areas that you don't want for instance it doesn't make sense to me that we have a lot of like metal edgeware on this area so I can go to my brushes grab something like a dirt brush or their splash brush right here and just with that paint layer paint out certain parts of the element or or if I want to I could be like hey you know what I would like to have a little bit more damage on this area now in order to make this thing a little bit more interesting we need to look at the reference and see what is going on here that makes this look well as intense as it does and the first thing that I notice is that there's definitely a little bit of moss going around whenever I need to do moss I actually like using rust but I just change a couple of values uh, about it so I'm gonna go here to the top part with the metal rust and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna bring the roughness down a little bit so it's gonna be definitely a little bit more shiny and on the rust color I'm gonna change this rust color to not a saturated green it's like a like a mix between green and yellowish so something like that and it's usually a little bit darker so should look a little bit slimy like this. I'm gonna add a black mask and I'm gonna start playing with filters. So I'm gonna add a fill right here. And if I look for some like grunge textures, I should be able to find some filters that we can use to just generate a general thing like this one, grunge cobweb, that looks very nice. Or this one right here, grunge crack deep, that one's also interesting. We also have this one right here, grunge concrete spots. I think that one's actually gonna be probably the best. And look at that. Immediately, we get a very, very nice sort of like effect thanks to this filter right here. Play a little bit with the contrast. I'm definitely gonna play with the tiling to get this into a smaller sort of like uh, moss section. Let's try four, where I think it's a good number. There we go. So we're gonna do a four section right there. And what we can do is, again, play a little bit with the balance, which is how much of this we're going to be seeing. Play a little bit with the contrast. I think the, the green is still a little bit too bright, so I'm going to make it a little bit more saturated, but a little bit darker. This is the Lady of the Moor, right? So we would expect to see a little bit of this, and you can see how, how that's going to change a little bit of the of the specularity of the, of the gate, right? When the shine lights shines through it, we're going to see these areas that are a little bit more interesting. Uh, I think we can have a little bit more balance back in the mask. And this is where, again, knowing about Substance Painter is gonna allow you to, to utilize a little bit more of the features that we have within the software. So for instance, one thing I can do here is I'm gonna add another uh, generator, and this is gonna be a position generator, which as you can see right here on the mask, it's a black and white mask. So what I can do is I can invert this thing right here and multiply it 
so that what happens is we're gonna get moss on the lower sections of the element and not too much on the upper sections so that we only get moss on the underlying sections which is the, the place where i would expect this kind of stuff to accumulate a little bit more right now usually this type of uh, elements or buildings there's always a little bit of a gradient going on that allows us to see what part is the top part of the element and what part is the bottom part of the element so i want to add that and this stuff it's definitely going to be underneath the rust so it is going to be affecting the stones so i'm going to add a black layer just a normal like very basic black layer here not completely black as you can see i'm going to like this very dark red um this is only going to affect color and i'm going to add a black mask right click at the generator and we're going to add another position generator now i'm going to flip that one right there and we can play here with the with the balance i just want to have a little bit of a darker tone on the on the lower like stones if that makes sense lower stones are going to have a little bit of a darker thing there's more dirt there's more moss there's more things that are going to be accumulated in that particular area we can play around with other things like instead of using uh, this we can use material mode and look for instance for this like cracked canyon rock or whatever and what's going to happen is now that cracked canyon rock is going to be here on the underlying section of the element if we change the color of this thing to a darker like canyon color i'm going to utilize a little bit of this blending to get some nice interesting effects and we overlay this. Actually, the normal was looking quite nice. Maybe just like lowering the intensity there and making sure that this is only affecting color, no roughness or normal. So just color information. That's already gonna give me an interesting effect where the lower portion of the element, it's a little bit darker in this case, even a little bit more saturated than the upper part of the of the stones. Now to modify the upper part of the stones, which is which, or of the of the stones, which also have a little bit of a, of an effect there, I'm gonna use a different material. We can go back here to materials, and let's say we're gonna use cork natural. Looks nice. I'm not sure if you guys have that one. Hopefully you do. So I don't remember if I download that one at any point, and I like it because it has again a little bit of an interesting color texture. I'm gonna turn everything off. This is gonna be set to linear dodge because it's gonna to add to the colors. It's gonna add a black mask and we're gonna use another generator. In this case, the generator is gonna be a light generator. And this light generator is gonna be hitting the top parts of the stones. Can you see that right there? And we can play around with this highlight level with the glossiness. We can lower it a little bit. And as you can see, we're gonna get a very nice, again, like gradient where the top parts of the stones are gonna be like hitting this or having this sort of like nice little layer of dust or something like that. Of course, as we bring this down, we're gonna be able to, to generate a very interesting look without spending too much energy trying to texture everything. And you can see it right there. Look at how much this changes, right? Especially from like a top view, it's definitely gonna happen. It's definitely gonna be seen. And this is something that we see in all the buildings. And it also has to do with the sun. The sun is constantly hitting like objects in the world and it bleaches things out. And the things that are closer to the top are gonna get bleached a little, a little bit more intensely than things that are on the, on the bottom. Now, I don't like this like uniform sort of like cape or thing that we have right there. So what we can do here is we can add another generator Let's add like a dirt generator, for instance, and then multiply this dirt generator, or in this case, I think it's going to be divide. Yeah, there we go. And as you can see, this dirt generator is going to be able to sort of like break things down a little bit so that it's not as obvious. That actually looks pretty damn sick. <laughs> so again, by doing a little bit of blending, we're able to bring way more contrast to this thing and make it look a lot more interesting. So finally, to sort of like wrap this up, I want to show you how we can add the like lichen thing right here, like those white elements. That's lichen. It's a spe specific type of uh, symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm going to keep height in this one, actually. And I'm going to use a very light color on both of them there we go black mask and i'm gonna look for another fill layer that gives me that sort of stuff like this one right here so, oh that's a lot of, this one paint peel looks looks interesting so let me find the proper tiling so the proper size there we go i like that one it's definitely not looking white enough so we're definitely gonna push the white a lot more probably lower the intensity there a little bit but we do want to have the contrast right and once we have the contrast, I'm going to add a paint layer here. And I'm going to go back to my brushes, grab some sort of like a dirt brush right here again. And following this thing, you can see that we're going to see a lot more on the upper part. So I'm going to erase a lot of this, especially here on the bottom part where we're not going to have too much. And this again, this is the artistic part of things where, where we really spend time like making sure things look as interesting and as nice as possible. And again, similar to how we did this when we were sculpting the element, 
I'm, I'm looking at the balance between the elements, right? Like, it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced all the time, like Thanos would say, right? But it definitely has to have some sort of, like, idea behind it. So, if I'm, if I'm, if I see that there's a little bit too much on one place, I might remove it. If I see that there's a little bit too little on another place, I might add a little bit more. So, there we go. We have successfully built this archway right here that matches with the sort of, like, shape that we want to have, right? It has, like, a very nice structure. We're using PBR materials. We're following pretty much all of the rules one more thing we can add here for instance are like scratches those always sort of like help so i'm gonna add a new layer here it's just gonna be a white layer very rough add a black mask right click again fill layer and i really like using the the scratches that we have here there's ones right here look tend to look quite nice there we go and again linear dodge right to to add on top and then like really lower the intensity so that's just gonna give me a little bit of different striations on, on some of the stones again bringing a little bit more complexity to the whole thing paint layer as always and delete or, or remove some of them so that it's not overwhelming those ones in particular the the scratches one thing that we can do is go to the hide information and if we turn it on we can actually push them in a little bit not too much right like we don't want to like overdo it where it like it's too too intense if we just do like a very sort of like simple scratch effect right there, that could potentially help with the um, with the construction of the of the whole thing. And that's it. I think again, we can spend hours and hours and hours working on assets like this uh, until they look absolutely freaking amazing. But I think that we're in a in a very good like spot with this particular one right here. And with this, we are finished, my friends. With this, we are completely done with this section of the little graveyard that we assembled. I really like the final result that we get right here, and hopefully you do too. Along this series, I've shown you several different techniques that you can use on your own projects. This can be done with statues, pillars, wall sections, and a bunch of other different things so hopefully with all the tools that we share here you now have even more available techniques and skills for your own projects if you like this series so far don't forget to like share subscribe leave us a comment it really helps to know what you guys like and that way i can prepare more stuff of course for you my friends thank you very much and don't forget always learning always improve